Howdy folks, this is Colin Stapleton from Deadwood Alive with this week's video. If you've been following along with us, we've been talking about the new series that we're going to be doing this spring, summer, and fall. We're going to be talking about the closing, clothing of a particular period of time. And then on the same day, we'll do another show about the firearms of that particular period. Now, we kind of finished off last week with what uh, a gunslinger has would be wearing, uh, the guns that uh, he would be carrying, those kind of things, around the 1870s. Now this week, I kind of, and it's kind of fitting with Valentine's Day coming up as well, how would a gentleman have dressed, especially his evening wear? Or particularly a gambler that's uh, got a little penchant for the fancy, uh, he might dress similar to what I'm doing here today. I'm kind of, I'm going to kind of describe what I'm wearing and why, and uh, uh, we'll kind of go from there. Now, you might think that this is a little too fancy, that they wouldn't have dressed like this, but they did. Uh, and we'll kind of start with the bottom. Why don't we start at the bottom? You always think about people in that era wearing cowboy boots. Well, if you're going out on the town, you're not going to be riding a horse, so you don't need boots to get in your saddle stirrups with. So you would wear a dressier pair of shoes. A lot of the fellows would wear what's called a brogan, which would look similar to this, but it would come on up the ankle. And Oxford shoes came into popularity at that time. Uh, they started uh, fusing the end of laces so that you could feed them through lace holes easier. And that's when the Oxford became very popular in the early 1800s. So they might have worn a shoe like that. Now, I am wearing very thick, very hot, fancy wool pants. That's what they would have worn to go out on the town. It's so much fancier than if you were wearing canvas or denim or something along those lines. So they would wear a fancy pair of wool pants. And if you think it's hot today going out in a suit and tie, try wearing these things and going anywhere and not sweating your behind off. So these are fairly fancy. They have a nice vertical stripe, uh, dark in color. Uh, dark colors were very common at that time. Now, got a pretty fancy vest on. You saw me wearing a four pocket vest before. So when you're riding on horseback, you got all these pockets to put all your stuff in. If you're going out on the town, you don't need your harmonica. You don't need your bag of snuff or chew or tobacco or your, your gum if you're chewing uh, uh, chewing gum. You don't need all that stuff. You're going out on the town. You're going to impress your lady. So you don't need all those pockets. You might need one to put your pocket watch in though. So there is a couple of pockets in this and it's very fancy and really ornate. Got my pocket watch with me. Got to have that pocket watch if you're going out on the town so you don't miss the start time for that fancy show you're going to go see down at the Deadwood Theater later. A lot of men wore a signet ring like that. It's kind of fancy as well. It kind of indicates a lot of them would have your initial on them. Uh, so that is kind of your signet, your signal, your sign, your token, your what you're about is on that signet ring. So you would wear your fancy signet ring. You would wear a tie. They had all kinds of ties. Now this particular one is more like a cravat and I tied it in a foreign hand knot. Now they may have used a foreign hand tie that was a lot narrower than what this thing is, or tied it like a big puff tie and had it puffed out like this. They may even wear like an Apache scarf with a slide on it. This one's kind of fancy here, it's got a turquoise slide on it. May wear a bow tie. Now they did have fancy ties, bow ties that you had to tie. They also had the ones like you might have worn at the last wedding you were in, that has a kind of a strap that goes around and hooks. They had those. They also had them in a long tie that went around with a strap and hook. And those were called tech ties. So you think that that's just a modern invention. Well, it was modern to the 1800s anyway. So they might have worn that. Now this particular shirt I'm wearing has a fold down collar. They may or may not have used a, fo a fold down collar. Last time I talked about the detachable collars. This is a rounded detachable collar. And I just mentioned tuxedos. When you wear a tuxedo at that wedding, you generally have those tips that fold over, those little tips on a collar. They also had those in a detachable collar, and that's more likely what you would wear with a bow tie or something really fancy. But I just went with this today because it was simpler for me. You would have on your fancy hat, 
like this. You may have a top hat on like this, or towards the end of the 1800s, the Homburg hat became very popular, as well as the fedora. I personally like this hat myself. It was popularized when Prince Edward came back from Hamburg, Germany from a vacation in 1898. Everybody thought it was amazing. Even Winston Churchill wore one of these things for most of his life. Now, when you take your hat off, you need to put your hat stretcher in it. Everybody has a hat stretcher to take care of your hat. Make sure it doesn't shrink or your head get too big for it, one or the other. Now, the last thing I've got on is my coat. It's a nice little frock coat, kind of comes down a little bit lower. Uh, for a little less formal, they may have worn a sack coat, which is basically a suit coat like we have now. But you might have your frock coat on, your long sleeves and your cuff links, and go out on the town as fancy as you can be. Now we've got Valentine's Day coming up on Friday. There's lots of events all over for Valentine's Day. So you fellas, you get out there, you get your lady some chocolates, you get her some roses, you dress up real fancy, you take her out to dinner and a show, and you have a real nice time. Now we're going to be starting these shows in the middle of March where we're going to be talking about all these clothing as well as the handguns and so forth, adding those to our schedule starting the middle of March. So if you would like to know a little more information about that, get on our website at deadwoodalive.com while you're at it. Check out all the offerings the museums have at deadwoodhistory.com. Go to the Chamber website, deadwood.com. We're going to be doing these shows at the Outlaw Square, so go to the outlawsquare.com. Check all this stuff out. Get up here, be looking for you, be looking for us, and we'll be looking out for you.